My name is Pierre Gobert. Uh, I served in the Marine Corps from 2013 to 2017. I just graduated um, Sabio Bootcamp. I decided to use the Vet Tech program for Sabio because it allowed me to save my GI Bill entitlement. And this new pilot program allows you to just get your experience with programming um, with the hope that you're going to get a software development job. Sabio allowed me to make an application before I even graduated. Um, the application is a web application for the city of Los Angeles, and it happened to make me look great in interviews, and I was able to explain thoroughly because we have great instructors at Sabio. In a traditional four-year school, you're going to be taking those classes for a semester, like five months. But in a coding boot camp, everything is accelerated. Everything's fast, uh, but there's other people with you making something great something that you create with the, your mind. Uh, I feel confident uh, that I will get a job after this program. They set you up for success, uh, definitely. Um, I ended up getting a job offer right when I graduated, um, but um, I would say to really stick through it and to really put in uh, a lot of work, because you put, what you put in is what you get out. Hi, my name is Leandro Rodriguez and I served in the Navy um, in Bremerton, Washington. I moved to North Carolina and then I came right back to Washington State where I got my certificate as a Python developer at Code Fellows using the Vet Tech program. Um, I think that Vet Tech is actually a very convenient uh, path for a veteran like me. You know, I wanted to go to college but I had a passion for uh, computer development. So VetTech has allowed me to actually, you know, successfully complete a program, get a job, and then while I'm on the job, if my employer requires me to get a, a, a college degree as well, I can work on it uh, at the same time. A year ago, when I got out of the Navy, you know, I got a job where, you know, it was paying 15 an hour, and then all of a sudden, you know, I get my training and my life has changed because I'm, I'm now offered, you know, a competitive salary. I think that Code Fellows is also um, a perfect place and there was tons of places. Um, not all of them were authorized by the VA. So, you know, it took me a month to decide and I said, you know what, I, wa I want to be part of that adventure. And I came all the way to Seattle and went through the program and between a week before I graduated, I got a job offer already. Uh, so I'm just excited to start on my new job and then that's just thanks to Code Fellows and the VA as well. I think the Vet Tech program is amazing and it's a way to just, it gives us the opportunity to really decide on what path we want to go without any restrictions. So what a, what a great concept, best year ever. Uh, I've been privileged in my career to work for some of America's greatest leaders. You know, Condi Rice, Don Rumsfeld, Bob Gates, Jim Mattis. And in 2018, I was, I was very happy working at the Pentagon. I'd been born into a military family, I served. And, and for me, the Pentagon was the apogee uh, of personal achievement. Uh, and then I got a call. Uh, I got a call that came out of the blue asking if I would uh, accept the position as the Acting Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Well, having been born in khaki diapers, I immediately said yes. Uh, a remarkable institution, but an institution that had been buffeted by a lot of bad press and, and people who had dedicated themselves to serving others who had not been treated very well by the general public or the media. And my goal was to say, you really are a remarkable group of Americans. 
And by doing that, I, uh, I set about to implement something that General Eisenhower always talked about, walking the post. He said every commander is told in every manual uh, that you, you walk the post to see how the troops are doing. Well, Eisenhower flipped that on its head. He said he walked the post to be inspired. And in the year that, uh, I, year and a half that I've been here, uh, I've been in 43, 44 states being inspired. And in that time, what we've seen happen here, apart from all of the immediate progr programmatic effects, we've seen this institution go from 17 out of 17 in terms of best places in government to work to number six, just in a year and a half. And the result of that is we are serving more veterans than we've ever served before. Last year we had 60 million appointments. That's two more, two million more than the year before. But we've also implemented the most far-reaching uh, reforms in the history of this institution. The Mission Act that gives our veterans more choice. Calmery, which, which enhances uh, veterans' experiences for themselves and their families when it comes to uh, the GI Bill. We've reduced the number of claims. We're modernizing our, our benefits program. Uh, we're about to implement the electronic health record, which is the most complex program the federal government has right now. All of this goes back to the best year. The best year. The best year when people I care greatly about, people I'm honored to serve with, uh, came together. Uh, they reminded all of us of our, our purpose that Mr. Lincoln laid out to serve all of those who have borne the battle and for their families. And it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty good ride. And I wish everybody in our department uh, the best. Thank you for what you do. You are extraordinary public servants. Take care. Whenever I was growing up, education wasn't a huge uh, thing for me to for me to actually pursue. And co going into the military and coming out and learning about the post 9/11 GI Bill and the opportunities that come along with that, it really gave me the opportunity to attend school free of charge and be able to engage in the campus community in a way that I wouldn't have been able to had I not had access to the post 9/11 GI Bill. The difference between a traditional four-year school and a coding boot camp is, is great because it's in a traditional four-year school, you're going to be taking those classes for a semester. But in a coding boot camp, everything is accelerated. Everything's fast, uh, but there's other people with you that's doing the same thing, coding for uh, the whole day, making something that you crave with your mind. Uh, when I first got out of active duty, I was having a hard time transitioning back into the civilian life. I was going to school to become a mechanical engineer and I was about four credits away from graduating with my associates and my wife and I collectively made the decision that it would be better for me to pursue a job like this where I actually enjoy myself than to go back to school and kind of just be stuck in that Monday through Friday nine to five routine that wasn't really for me. You can use a GI Bill to really pursue anything that you want to do, whether that be at a four-year university or a two-year university or some type of uh, certification program. It really lets you choose the career that you want to have. You have options and there are good options and there are a lot of options that you can choose from. It's honestly like a dream. I've always wanted to be a programmer. The GI Bill and Vet Tech made it to reality. I would have never been able to do any of this without the GI Bill. That is, it's a huge thing because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do these. I would be stuck doing a nine to five job instead of following my dreams and it's possible because of the GI Bill. Anybody that's considering getting out of the military, the first thing you gotta do is check out the GI Bill and see what it can do for you as far as in education goes.
when I found myself thinking about my best year ever, I went back to the immediate past. And, and what was interesting about that was a series of accomplishments that all sort of looked the same. So I began to think further back about what I'll call a formidable year in my life, where it really set in motion foundations that helped me appreciate not only personal accomplishments, but some of the things I think about at BVA. I went all the way back to 1982 to think about my best year ever, and to appreciate that in context. When 1981 ended, I was completing my seventh year of college. No, not my undergraduate work. I had gone through and done my undergraduate and my master's, and I was completing my PhD. But I hadn't completed my dissertation. And when 1982 started, I, w I went into the Army to fulfill my ROTC requirement. At night, in officer basic training and all the other things I did, I was finishing my dissertation. Along the way while I was in the Army, I signed up to go to airborne school. That would be my July of 1982. And so, ironically, within one week, I graduated from airborne school and I returned to the campus of Virginia Tech to defend my dissertation. I completed a long-term personal task that had taken many years to get my doctorate, but yet I had picked up a new task along the way to go to airborne school. The combination of those two things really made me think hard about setting goals, not only the completion of long-term goals, but developing new short-term goals. And along the way, I reflected on how interesting my life had changed. What was once my pure accomplishment to be a college professor, I now began to think differently. And I was surprised at how much different the goals were, how much more confidence I had in what I could accomplish, and what once seemed impossible could be done. So when I reflect upon this for VBA, I think the setting of the goals is important, the challenging ourselves to have these accomplishments, and even acknowledging that we're better than even we think. Okay, and I'll sort of end with what I will call the external validation. When my brother, my brother's a year younger than I am, and he traveled a more traditional military route. He was a ROTC scholarship at Virginia Tech, he joined the Army, he went to airborne school and then ranger school. And after I returned home with my airborne wings, he came up to me and shook my hand and I'll never forget, he said, we thought you were gonna die. So, the net of that was, the external validation was tremendous and I think about that when we accomplish goals every day at BBA. Veterans are the backbone of our country and the Association of Military Banks of America is committed to serving those who have served. That's why the Department of Veterans Affairs is partnering with AMBA to launch the Veterans Benefits Banking Program, or VBBP, to provide veterans a safe, reliable, and inexpensive way to receive and manage their VA monetary benefits. Many veterans currently receive their VA monetary benefits on prepaid debit cards or by paper checks, and some have experienced problems using these payment methods or found it difficult to access traditional banking products and services. The VBBP is an effort to offer all veterans an opportunity to deposit their benefit funds directly into existing or new accounts offered by participating AMPA member banks. Our veterans who receive monetary benefits should have as many financial management and services options as possible. Participating VBBP banks will offer eligible veterans federally insured and regulated financial products, services, and education that can be tailored to their needs and the needs of their families. The VA remains committed to providing veterans with the benefits they have earned in a manner that honors their service. AMBA is a not-for-profit association of banks and related financial service providers that for over 60 years has worked to serve and protect the financial future of military members, veterans, and their families. The VA and AMBA are proud to provide this opportunity to connect veterans with banks who understand their needs and to ensure those who have served receive the highest levels of service in return. For any questions, please call the VA at their toll-free number 1-800-827-1000. To learn more about the program, visit benefits.va.gov banking or veteransbenefitsbanking.org.
Hello everyone, I'm Ray Telez of VBA, and I welcome you to the Managing VBA Performance and Results webcast for quarter two of fiscal year 2020. Thank you for joining us. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Paul Lawrence, our Undersecretary for Benefits. Thank you, Ray. Hello everyone. Our world has changed since we last met. Through it all, we've continued to deliver for veterans. I want to use the next 20 minutes or so to tell you what we've been doing by reporting on VBA's performance in the second quarter of FY20. First, I'll give you an overview of VBA. Then I'll report on how each of our business lines performed and what this means for veterans. I'll provide an update on special topics, Blue Water Navy, the Camary Act, and Solid Start. And I'll let you know how we've been moving forward and accountable during this unusual time. I'll share news about the Veterans Benefits Banking Program we launched last quarter, and I'll discuss how VBA has adapted in response to COVID-19. I've asked four VBA senior leaders to talk about the special topics. Margarita Devlin will tell you about Solid Start and our commitment to consistent, caring contact with new veterans. Charmaine Bow will update you on the Comary Act and how we continue to fulfill our promises to student veterans. Beth Murphy will discuss our processing of Blue Water Navy claims and how we are fulfilling this promise to Vietnam veterans. And Joe Gurney will let you know about the developments in our new Veterans Benefits Banking Program, which offers veterans a safer, more efficient delivery of benefits. Before we begin, let me remind you about VBA. We are a nationwide organization comprised of more than 25,000 employees, most of whom are veterans. In Q2, we distributed more than $31 billion in benefits. We continue to act on my three priorities. One, providing benefits to veterans with excellent customer service. Two, fiscal stewardship. And three, strong collaboration. These three priorities remain at the heart of everything we do. Within VBA, we have eight business lines that you see on the slide. Each business line is led by an accountable senior executive who is responsible for the results I will highlight shortly. Before that, let me give you the bottom line up front. VBA's performance in Q2 of FY20 was outstanding. Each one of our eight business lines exceeded their performance targets, delivering top quality, efficient service to veterans and families. Stated differently, just like we did last quarter, in Q2, we beat the performance targets we raised at the beginning of the fiscal year. That means a record number of veterans have been served this quarter. To the entire VBA team, great job. Now let's go through the business lines. As you can see, compensation exceeded its performance targets, processing more claims faster and with a high level of quality. In fact, they beat their target by more than 20%. This March, they set a record for the highest number of completed disability rating claims in a single month. But what does that mean for veterans? If you're a veteran who's recently transitioned, getting benefits earlier can make the difference between covering essential expenses like food, housing, and paying bills, or falling behind. Thank you to our team for their continued hard work. Now here's Beth Murphy to talk about processing Blue Water Navy claims. On January 1, 2020, VA began deciding claims for disability compensation under the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019. As of end of March 2020, we received more than 50,000 Blue Water Navy claims from veterans and survivors. VBA has already completed processing almost one-third of these, generating more than $305 million in retroactive benefit payments. As part of our work processing thousands of Blue Water Navy claims, VBA conducts ongoing quality reviews as spot checks used to give feedback to our claims processors. We continue to scan and upload additional Coast Guard deck log information into the ship locator tool that we created in partnership with National Archives, Department of Defense, and others. The Ship Locator tool uses data from deck logs to help VBA claims processors determine where Blue Water Navy veterans served. I'm pleased to report the VBA team that created this innovative tool recently received a Gears of Government award. VBA team members were Paul Shute from Compensation Service, 
Patrick Wilson from Office of Business Process Integration, and James Cunningham from Office of Performance Analysis and Integrity. Congratulations to them. We appreciate their efforts and support of Vietnam veterans. If you're interested in learning more about our work on Blue Water Navy, visit benefits.va.gov and search Blue Water Navy. Now, while I have you here, I'd like to share some important information about CMP exams during the pandemic. As Dr. Lawrence has said, VBA continues to process claims during the COVID-19 crisis. The safety and welfare of our veterans remains our number one priority during this time, and we have adapted how we conduct examinations in support of disability claims. Our contract examination vendors understand the importance of protecting veterans during the pandemic, and as such, are temporarily halting in-person examinations. All contract exam vendors have been directed to suspend all in-person examinations. Instead, veterans' disability examinations will be conducted virtually whenever possible. VBA has collaborated with VHA to expedite approval of additional telehealth devices to maximize the ability of vendors to conduct televideo and teleaudio examinations. Also, CMP examiners are using acceptable clinical evidence or ACE examinations, which entails reviewing evidence in the E folder and contacting the veteran if necessary to get other data or information points about the veteran's claimed condition. As the virus continues to spread across the globe, there are instances where vendors will be unable to complete some or all examinations that are being requested. If a veteran's current level of disability requires an in-person examination, VBA will hold that claim in abeyance until a physical examination can be conducted. Finally, we encourage veterans to submit private treatment records or any other type of medical evidence they have to help VBA assess level of disability without an examination. If a veteran does not have their private treatment records, VBA can help request and get them. Now, let's turn to appeals. The takeaway here is, appeals modernization continues to help veterans resolve their claims quickly. As you can see, we continue to drive down the number of legacy appeals and are on track to be done with them by July 4th. I am confident that we are going to meet that deadline. Today, non-remand legacy appeals are at their lowest level since tracking began in 2006. For our two decision lanes, supplemental claims and higher level review, we're completing our decisions faster than the targets. In Q2, we completed higher level reviews 50% faster than our target. Congratulations to our team on this impressive achievement. Now, let's discuss Veterans Pension and Dependency Indemnity Compensation, or DIC. It's a key part of VBA's mission to care for veterans in financial need through the Veterans Pension Program and for survivors or veterans whose cause of death was service-connected through DIC. Veterans Pension served 232,000 beneficiaries last quarter, paying out more than $772 million. And we delivered more than $1.9 billion in DIC benefits to 438,000 beneficiaries. In terms of pensions, we continue to exceed the number of claims completed, on average, four weeks faster than our target. This means that veterans and survivors spend less time waiting for the money they need. Next, let's talk about fiduciary. We are committed to protect the most vulnerable veterans and their benefits from fraud and abuse. In Q2, we completed more than 26,000 field exams, exceeding our target by 8%. This is really an important part of what we do. Beneficiaries who need fiduciaries often have no one else to look out for their interests. We take this responsibility seriously, often serving as their last line of defense. It's a special honor to support the more than 175,000 beneficiaries in the program. Let's talk about insurance. VA's life insurance program continues to deliver good news, providing financial security to veterans and their family. In Q2, we provided more than $1.2 trillion in coverage to 5.6 million people. As you can see, insurance disperses claims quickly and accurately, beating targets. We also greatly accelerate our pace to locate hard-to-find beneficiaries. Exceeding our insurance targets has special meaning. 
Delivering these insurance benefits is about completing our sacred promise to fulfill each veteran's final wish. Let's turn to education. We are continuing to process education claims faster and with high quality. In Q2, we served more than 700,000 students and paid out more than $3.4 billion. Next, Charmaine Bogue will provide updates about the completion of the Comeri Act and new legislation to protect student veterans during the pandemic. Good afternoon. We understand many students' education has been affected by COVID-19 and we are all working to adjust to these unprecedented times. New legislation allows VA to continue to pay students monthly housing allowance at the resident rate, even if programs have converted to online training because of the pandemic. This new law covers terms that started on March 1st until December 21st. We have provided a series of training webinars to educate schools regarding the new law. I want to thank the school leaders and administrators for their hard work and support over the last couple of weeks to help students. We continue to work with our veteran service organizations and National Education Association partners to get the word out. This spring, we began processing the new monthly housing allowance in accordance with the Comeri Act. With this change, the housing allowance is based on the physical campus location where a student attends the majority of his or her classes. I'm excited to report we are now accepting recertifications for impacted terms that started from August 1st, 2018 to November 30th, 2019. Our first priority is to expeditiously work with schools to ensure we make students whole. Over the next couple of months, students will begin to receive additional funds for any money owed for those impacted terms. VA has already started to send out notifications to students and schools. When the recertification process is complete, we will have upheld our commitment to ensuring all GI Bill students receive their monthly housing allowance in accordance with the law. I'm very proud of our team's collaborative effort and unwavering dedication to serve GI Bill students, especially during these trying and difficult times. We continue to post updated information on our GI Bill website, as well as our GI Bill Facebook page. Thank you to all our stakeholders, especially students, who continue to share our messaging to their networks through social media channels. We understand there's still more work ahead of us. Late breaking news, the Student Veterans Coronavirus Response Act of 2020 passed the Senate, and our team has already begun working implementation efforts. Our team continues to work hard for those who have served, and we remain dedicated to the mission to provide GI Bill students with the education benefits they have earned with exceptional customer service. Thank you. Thank you, Charmaine. In terms of vocational rehabilitation and employment, we continue to provide positive outcomes for our veterans. Long before COVID-19, VRE had expanded its telecounseling, allowing veterans to connect remotely with counselors. This is especially helpful for service-disabled veterans. Our early investment in telecounseling means that we are now able to serve more veterans remotely and deliver support when and where they need it. Now let's talk about home loan guarantee. We continue to issue certificates of eligibility faster than our targets, completing virtually all within five days. In fact, we completed the vast majority, 87%, in just one day. In Q2, we guaranteed a record number of 280,000 home loans for more than $82 billion. Simply stated, we are getting veterans faster access to home loans. Let's move on to Transition and Economic Development, or TED. TED administers several programs, including the Transition Assistance Program, or TAP, which provides information on VA benefits and services. Interactions with transitioning veterans, spouses, and caregivers that happen through TAP briefings are measured by TAP touches. For Q2, we had more than 90,000 TAP touches and surpassed our quality goal. We also continue to work on Solid Start. You'll recall this is the program that reaches out to new veterans three times a year to support a more successful transition. We've also implemented a new priority around veterans needing mental health attention. Here is Principal Deputy Undersecretary Margarita Devlin to tell you more about Solid Start. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. 
I'm really glad to be here today to talk about Solid Start, which we launched in December 2019. Solid Start is an innovative, proactive campaign designed to support veterans in that critical first year after their separation from the military. It's no longer incumbent on the veteran to know what the right question is or who to ask to get connected to VA. We've shifted that responsibility to VA. Here's how Solid Start works. Specially trained VA representatives are calling veterans three times during the first year after separation from service. The calls are made at approximately three months, six months, and one year after separation. Each call is highly personal based on the needs of each veteran. Solid Start callers can help veterans on the spot with establishing claims and connecting to the entire portfolio of VA benefits. When necessary, they will also make a warm handoff to another service like Veterans Healthcare Enrollment or Same Day Mental Health Appointments. If a veteran is in crisis, Solid Start callers will warm transfer them to the VA crisis line. And as mentioned before, there will be follow-up calls at the remaining intervals. You might ask, why is VBA doing this? Well, we have several reasons. Solid Start was inspired by Executive Order 13822, aimed at suicide prevention. But most importantly, it was driven by what we have heard directly from veterans. Veterans told us that at the time of separation, they're inundated with information and it's just too much to process and retain. They also told us that prior to separation from service, they have other more important issues on their minds and they're not even sure yet what they might need from VA. Solid Start provides veterans an opportunity to speak with a human and have a conversation that is tailored to their needs without having to discuss information that's not relevant to them. This way, veterans do not have to navigate alone through what can be an overwhelming and complicated array of benefits. We wanna start early to build lifelong, trusted relationships with veterans by providing early, proactive, consistent, and compassionate care. Although we only have a few months of data, our results so far have surpassed our expectations. Veterans have responded positively to our calls. We've achieved an acceptance rate of 52%, which far surpassed our expected rate of 15%. Also, we prioritize calls to veterans who have had a mental health appointment in the year before they separated. And for those veterans, the acceptance rate is even higher at 66%. We've reached more than 50,000 veterans since we started. And we are using the feedback from veterans and the information they are seeking to continually help us improve the process. We're pleased at how agile this program is. For example, we've already been able to adapt to include COVID-19 related information in the calls, including information on how to access healthcare, receive assistance with employment issues, and connect with financial information and resources. You can find more information about Solid Start on our website, benefits.va.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. We continue to hold ourselves accountable as good stewards of taxpayer dollars. We manage our budget, participate in hearings, and continue to meet with veterans. This quarter, in order to stay connected and responsive to veterans during the pandemic, I've introduced two new ways to engage and inform. I began using LinkedIn Live every Friday at noon to give updates on VBA in less than 10 minutes. And we're conducting teletown halls to interact with as many veterans as possible and answer their questions. I'm proud that VBA has been agile during this time and that we've kept our commitment to interact with as many veterans as we can. Speaking of new things, in late December, we introduced the Veterans Benefits Banking Program. Next. Joe Gurney will talk about how the program has grown. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. We are aware that some veterans face hurdles to accessing and securing the money they receive from VBA. Many veterans do not have a bank or credit union account where they can receive their benefits. So they resort to a prepaid debit card or a paper check they receive through the mail. Prepaid cards and checks open veterans up to scams, fraud, theft, and increased service fees. And when there is a problem, it can take more than 45 days to straighten out an issue. We found a way to get veterans funds that is faster, safer, and involves fewer fees. VBA has partnered with the Association of Military Banks of America, or AMBA, to create the Veterans Benefits Banking Program. 
Participating financial institutions are willing to work with any veteran who needs an account. Veterans who are happy with a prepaid debit card or checks can continue to get their benefits that way. If you already have a bank or credit union you're happy with, there's no need to change. But for those veterans looking for a safer option in these uncertain times, the military-friendly financial institutions of the Veterans Benefits Banking Program offer 28 great options. They understand the needs of veterans and their families. Through the Veterans Benefits Banking Program, your benefits go directly to your account at a participating bank or credit union. All of these financial institutions offer full protection of your money through the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or the National Credit Union Administration. We launched VBBP in December of last year with a financial literacy campaign and just four banks on board. As of the end of March, we have nine banks and 19 credit unions participating. The Veterans Benefits Banking Program is making a difference in the lives of veterans. I want to thank AMBA for partnering with us to bring better banking to more veterans. And I also want to thank the Defense Credit Union Council, banks, and credit unions who have volunteered to help us offer this service to those who have served our country. For more information, go to our Veterans Benefits Banking webpage on the screen. At VBA, we rely on VA's IT team. I again want to thank VA Chief Information Officer Jim Jaffer and his entire team for their strong partnership. I'd like to offer a special thank you to the VBA account leaders. Brad and Rob understand the work we do and help us leverage technology so we can do that work better. We wouldn't be where we are today without all of their help. At the end of Q2, COVID-19 changed the way we work at VBA. In response, we closed our physical offices and leveraged telework to protect the health of our employees and veterans. But we are still working and you can always contact us through va.gov or call us at 1-800-827-1000. As you heard from Beth and Charmaine, we are adjusting to address important issues like C&P exams and payments to student veterans. Two other items of note. We are granting extensions, just let us know. We are temporarily suspending debt. Call us at 1-800-827-0648 if you have a debt question. Again, call 1-800-827-1000 with your benefits questions. And if you or someone you know is in crisis, please call the crisis line at 1-800-273-8255. The point is, VBA is still here and ready to deliver seamless access and support veterans and their families during this time of uncertainty. Call, email, or join any of our Teletown Halls to get the information and support you need. To summarize, all VBA business lines delivered an outstanding performance in Q2. During this quarter, we've done more faster. We continue to fulfill our promises. We are completing the Comeri Act. We are honoring America's last promise to Vietnam veterans with Blue Water Navy. We are innovating how we reach veterans with Solid Start. And we are bringing real protection to veterans and their benefits with the Veterans Benefits Banking Program. Our success is not an anomaly. This is the fourth consecutive quarter all VBA business lines have exceeded their targets. We are raising the bar in performance and have raised our expectations on ourselves for how we support veterans. Let me tell you why this matters. When we complete a record number of claims or appeals or other items I have just described, we are actually delivering on the commitment America made to veterans for their service. And we are delivering on two important directives. We are meeting VA Secretary Wilkie's call to provide veterans with excellent customer service. And we are fulfilling President Lincoln's charge to us in his second inaugural address to care for him who shall have borne the battle. This quarter at VBA has been very different than we imagined at the start. But as these results demonstrate, our tenacity and commitment to serve our veterans also means that we are still on track to have our hashtag best year ever. Thank you for joining me. Stay safe and healthy. 
This completes the webcast on managing VBA performance and results for quarter two of fiscal year 2020. Don't forget, we invite you to connect with VBA through our channels. A recording of today's presentation will be available at benefits.va.gov forward slash stakeholder. For VA customer service, you may call 1-800-827-1000. And to learn more about VA benefits, visit benefits.va.gov. Please stay tuned for the after show. This will be a short presentation on how VBA has remained open for business and how we continue to do more through COVID-19. We'll let you know how we've adapted to stay connected with veterans and talk about the key information we've learned through Teletown Halls and Solid Start Calls. Until next time, hashtag best year ever. Two thousand and nineteen was the best year ever here at VA because of all that we've done to transform this department and all the successes that we've had. And in particular, what we've done to make sure our women veterans feel welcome and respected. Women are the largest growing population here at VA and because of that we need to make sure that we're ready and it's our job to be ready to support them and serve them when they transition out of the military. Uh, we are transforming this department to make sure that we are ready and we know that we're successful or at least on the path to success because of our trust that we have uh, from our women veterans. It keeps climbing higher and this year it's at an all-time high of 84%. So it's been a great year uh, and VA is a great place to serve. Attention fellow Vietnam veterans. If you have a condition linked to exposure to herbicides, including toxins like Agent Orange, and you served offshore of the Republic of Vietnam between 1962 and 1975, you may now be entitled to expanded VA benefits due to the Blue Water Navy Act of 2019. Veterans who served offshore and were previously denied for Agent Orange-related conditions can refile. Survivors of deceased veterans may also be eligible. VA is dedicated to helping Blue Water Navy veterans and our families get the benefits we've earned and deserve. For more information and to see the list of conditions that VA considers related to herbicide exposure, visit va.gov and search Blue Water Navy or call 1-800-749-8387. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The Veterans Benefits Administration is having a stellar year, and as a trusted partner, OIT has been committed to helping make it your best year ever. Our support to VBA's top successes includes Colmery Act, or the Forever GI Bill. OIT supported the December 1 launch of initial culinary services, reducing education benefits processing times for veterans and beneficiaries. OIT works shoulder to shoulder with VBA to support expanded Blue Water Navy benefits, ensuring qualifying veterans can now use VA systems to submit benefits claims related to herbicide exposure in Vietnam. And lastly, OIT developed the new benefits intake API which allows veterans' claims to be processed five to six days faster than paper claims. Veterans and VSOs can use the API to digitally submit PDF documents directly to VA and soon in a pure electronic format. Partnership is the key to success in VA and OIT will continue and expand our close relationship with all of our business customers to ensure that veterans receive the benefits and services that they have earned. My name is Pierre Gobert. Uh, I served in the Marine Corps from 2013 to 2017. I just graduated um, Sabio Bootcamp. I decided to use the Vet Tech program for Sabio because it allowed me to save my GI Bill entitlement. And this new pilot program allows you to just get your experience with programming um, with the hope that you're going to get a software development job. 
Octavio allowed me to make an application before I even graduated. Um, the application is a web application for the city of Los Angeles, and it happened to make me look great in interviews, and I was able to explain thoroughly because we have great instructors at Savio. In a traditional four-year school, you're going to be taking those classes for a semester, like five months. But in a coding boot camp, everything is accelerated. Everything's fast, uh, but there's other people with you making something great something that you create with the, your mind. Uh, I feel confident uh, that I will get a job after this program. They set you up for success, uh, definitely. Um, I ended up getting a job offer right when I graduated, um, but um, I would say to really stick through it and to really put in uh, a lot of work, because you put, what you put in is what you get out. Hi, my name is Leandro Rodriguez and I served in the Navy um, in Bremerton, Washington. I moved to North Carolina and then I came right back to Washington State where I got my certificate as a Python developer at Code Fellows using the Vet Tech program. Um, I think that Vet Tech is actually a very convenient uh, path for a veteran like me. I knew I wanted to go to college but I had a passion for uh, computer development. So VetTech has allowed me to actually, you know, successfully complete a program, get a job, and then while I'm on the job, if my employer requires me to get a, a, a college degree as well, I can work on it uh, at the same time. A year ago, when I got out of the Navy, you know, I got a job where, you know, it was paying 15 an hour, and then all of a sudden, you know, I get my training and my life has changed because I'm, I'm now offered, you know, a competitive salary. I think that Code Fellows is also a um, perfect place and there was tons of places. Um, not all of them were authorized by the VA. So, you know, it took me a month to decide and I said, you know what, I, wa I want to be part of that adventure. And I came all the way to Seattle and went through the program and between a week before I graduated, I got a job offer already. Uh, so I'm just excited to start my new job, and then that's just thanks to Code Fellows and the VA as well. I think the Vet Tech program is amazing, and it's a way to just, it gives us the opportunity to really decide on what path we want to go without any restrictions. Whenever I was growing up, education wasn't a huge uh, thing for me to for me to actually pursue. And co going into the military and coming out and learning about the post 9/11 GI Bill and the opportunities that come along with that, it really gave me the opportunity to attend school free of charge and be able to engage in the campus community in a way that I wouldn't have been able to had I not had access to the post 9/11 GI Bill. The difference between a traditional four-year school and a coding boot camp is, is great because it's in a traditional four-year school, you're going to be taking those classes for a semester. But in a coding boot camp, everything is accelerated. Everything's fast, uh, but there's other people with you that's doing the same thing, coding for uh, the whole day, making something that you create with your mind. Uh, when I first got out of active duty, I was having a hard time transitioning back into the civilian life. I was going to school to become a mechanical engineer and I was about four credits away from graduating with my associates and my wife and I collectively made the decision that it would be better for me to pursue a job like this where I actually enjoy myself than to go back to school and kind of just be stuck in that Monday through Friday nine to five routine that wasn't really for me. You can use a GI Bill to really pursue anything that you want to do, whether that be at a four-year university or a two-year university or some type of uh, certification program. It really 
lets you choose the career that you want to have. You have options, and there are good options, and there are a lot of options that you can choose from. It's honestly like a dream. I've always wanted to be a programmer. The GI Bill and Vet Tech made it to reality. I would have never been able to do any of this without the GI Bill. That is, it's a huge thing, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do these. I would be stuck doing a nine to five job instead of following my dreams, and it's possible because of the GI Bill. Anybody that's considering getting out of the military, the first thing you gotta do is check out the GI Bill and see what it can do for you as far as in education goes. Veterans are the backbone of our country, and the Association of Military Banks of America is committed to serving those who have served. That's why the Department of Veterans Affairs is partnering with AMBA to launch the Veterans Benefits Banking Program, or VBBP, to provide veterans a safe, reliable, and inexpensive way to receive and manage their VA monetary benefits. Many veterans currently receive their VA monetary benefits on prepaid debit cards or by paper checks, and some have experienced problems using these payment methods or found it difficult to access traditional banking products and services. The VBBP is an effort to offer all veterans an opportunity to deposit their benefit funds directly into existing or new accounts offered by participating AMPA member banks. Our veterans who receive monetary benefits should have as many financial management and services options as possible. Participating VBBP banks will offer eligible veterans federally insured and regulated financial products, services, and education that can be tailored to their needs and the needs of their families. The VA remains committed to providing veterans with the benefits they have earned in a manner that honors their service. AMBA is a not-for-profit association of banks and related financial service providers that for over 60 years has worked to serve and protect the financial future of military members, veterans, and their families. The VA and AMBA are proud to provide this opportunity to connect veterans with banks who understand their needs and to ensure those who have served receive the highest levels of service in return. For any questions, please call the VA at their toll-free number 1-800-827-1000. To learn more about the program, visit benefits.va.gov banking or veteransbenefitsbanking.org.